Hi, this is Joe and welcome back for another video. In this video we're going to finish cleaning the commutator. We're going to test the armature and the field windings. We're going to reassemble the motor, put in new brushes, and perform an operational test. So let's get started. After you do the sanding and wiping it down with acetone, get yourself like a box cutter knife with one of the box blades and very gently, you notice there's grooves on that, very gently you want to go through and if you look at the tip of that, because we've sanded on there, you'll see some crud build up on that on that knife blade. So we want to go across and go through every single little slot in between the contacts on the commutator and we want to get all that crud that we sanded off. Commutator's looking much brighter now. Again, we don't want to take a lot off, we just want to get the crud off there. It's looking now, you can see more of a coppery cup color. Also, if there's any bearings on the other side, this is a fan for cooling. We want to make sure that is, it's, and if you can tell, that's splined on there, so that's not going to turn. But we want to make sure none of this is loose and that there's no play because if there's play in there then that is a, a worn uh, part. Okay, and this, this goes into your pump right here. Now that we've cleaned up the commutator, we're going to take our ohm meter and we're going to test the armature and we're going to make sure it's functioning properly. There's basically, uh, by the textbook, there's four tests that you can perform in testing an armature. I'll show you the textbook way. You want to have your meter set on ohms uh, notice the OL, that's the open loop. Continuity is, you put that together and it will pretty much, after it ranges here, it will read zero, which is 100% uh, continuity. So uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to test that the commutator here is connected properly to all of the copper windings that wrap around the outside of this armature. This is a uh, a steel covering and it is uh, a series of metal pieces that are laminated together uh, as opposed to being a solid piece there's some better properties by laminating these thin layers of steel together first off what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the commutator is not grounded out the shaft is considered the ground so what we're going to do is take this and we're going to go through and we're going to touch each one of the segments on the commutator and we're going to go all the way around and we're going to make sure that none of these segments are being grounded out to the to the shaft of the armature. If your shaft is grounded to the commutator then you're not going to get a proper magnetic field on the armature. So that's test number one. Test number two is if you notice when we pulled the uh, armature out of the the stator or the stationary housing that includes the uh, field windings and the permanent magnets you'll notice there's the brush holders and these brush holders sit on this commutator at 180 degrees apart. So what you want to do is you want to start your your meter and pick two segments on the commutator 180 degrees apart and you want to notice what the reading is and we're getting a, a 0.9 to 1.1 so then we want to slightly rotate and we want to go all the way around and it's not so important what the actual number is but what we want to make sure is that all of the readings are fairly close together within 10 percent. So we're here on this one we're getting up 1.0 and again we just want to go all the way around 180 apart degrees apart and notice that this one is 1.1 so this is very so I've already gone all the way around but this is just to show you how you do that again the brush settings on the commutator would be that's test number two this is textbook Test number three is you take your meter and you go segment to segment, right 
the adjacent segments right next to each other. Notice this is point 0.0 to point 0.1. So then we're going to rotate this and we're going to go through all adjacent segments. And the meter's ranging now. And this is a point 0.1. This is point 0.0 to point 0.1. And we're going to go all the way around segment to segment. And again, it takes a second for the meter to read. So again, 10% on the commutator so that we're not getting continuity because what happens is when the brushes run around this commutator it's actually sending the electrical current through these windings to produce the magnetic field so we want to make sure that this commutator is not cracked and has continuity all the way around. Next test we want to do is very similar. Now we want to make sure the steel laminated sleeves on here are not there's no that there's no continuity between the commutator and the metal armature covering we do not want continuity there because then that would mean that you're shorting out your windings so something could have happened internally with the copper wire and it then could be shorting out with the the metal armature cover so we do not want any continuity and again, you go all the way around, you t test each sleeve on the armature, and you make sure that there are no shorts or no continuity reading on that. So we did the ground test, we did the 180 degrees, we did the segment to segment, and we did the commutator to the steel sleeve here. And so this armature now checks out fine. I've gone around off camera and I've tested every single one, every single steel sleeve on here, and I've tested the ground between all of the commutator segments and everything is fine. So that's how you test the armature. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take apart and get at the field windings. So we're going to pull this cover, which will expose the wires to the brushes, the wires to the fields. We'll take a look and perform the uh, field windings tests. There's two uh, major tests we have to do. These tests are for both AC and DC motors. So you can apply the same, uh, same tests, the same troubleshooting to uh, either type of motor. I wanted to pull this cover off to show you. As you see, there are some copper wires in a loop at the top, and there's copper wire loop at the bottom. These are your field windings. You notice there's also, if you could look at the outside or the inside, you'd be able to see there's all of these little plates or sleeves are all laminated together. That makes up uh, the portion where the armature rides around and the field windings uh, when you apply voltage and current that's what creates the magnetic field here and then the brushes riding on the commutator create magnetic field there which then causes the armature to turn. So what we're going to do is we're going to get in and we're going to test the resistance of these field windings. This will be a bit tough for you to see but I'm going to explain what I'm doing. We pulled the cover off so we can get at the uh, the brush holders and then there's if you notice there's two brown wires. These two brown wires are one side of the field windings. The other side of the windings are down inside and actually connected to the brush holders. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a resistance test. Here's the meter between one side of the field windings and the other side which is on the brush holder. The goal here is we want to make sure that the resistance is similar on both field windings. So let's go ahead and test that. What I'm going to do is there's some uh, 
crimp on wire nuts here. I'm going to stick one lead down inside and then I'm going to touch the other lead, watch the meter, and notice it's, it's uh, ranging now. Come on, uh, let's get in there. Let's give it a second to auto range. And we're getting around 10.7 ohms on this side. Now let's take and do the same thing with the other brown wire and it's auto ranging now. And we're getting 0.4. So that's a little concerning for me because both field windings are supposed to be really close to the same. Another thing we want to do is we want to check cross the other wire and the brush and notice there should be no continuity because each each field is separate, each field winding is separate. Let's flip it over to the other side and we're going to go cross one field winding to the opposite brush connector and again that's good. So. We're, we should only get continuity separate field windings. Okay, another thing we want to check is if we look on the inside, you'll notice there that uh, that uh, laminated sleeve in here, the metal portion where the armature slides into. We do not want any continuity between this metal portion and the field windings. If there is, that means that this metal sleeve is shorted between either of the field windings. So let's go ahead and do that. What we're going to do with this is we're going to take our lead and we're going to go into one of the wire nuts to the brown wire and then we're going to touch the that laminated sleeve. Again notice there's no continuity, no resistance. It's called open loop. So that is, uh, let's take and do the exact same thing to the other connector and there's no continuity. Now we're going to do the exact same thing between the brush holder and the laminated sleeve. No continuity. Let's go over to the other brush holder and touch the laminated sleeve and there's no continuity. So that checks out good with the field windings. Now that everything has been tested I have a new set of brushes. We're going to put the new brushes in and we're going to try to see if the motor works. Pretty much that is all the measurements that you can do. Let's go ahead and insert the armature into the housing. And it's free turning. So that's mounted in good. If we look through, we can see in the brush holders the commutator is there. So let's go ahead and mount the pump back to the motor. Okay, we have the pump back together. Let's go ahead and put in the new brushes and then we'll do an operational test of the motor. But let's go ahead and feed this down and then we'll I'll lay this flat and we'll put the covers back on. And we're going to try not to kink that spring too much. We'll push it down inside and we'll get a cap There, that's that side. Let's flip it over to the other side. Again, we'll put the brush in, the new brush. There we go. Try not to kink the springs on those brushes too much. They should go in rather flush, and you can do that. You just have to be gentle how you push them in. The one thing I'm noticing, on this side, the brush holder has more 
of the brush exposed on this side than on this side. So it looks like the brush holder is a little bit out of adjustment. It's closer to the commutator on this side than this side. That could also explain why we're getting uneven brush wear. We have the new brushes in and I have a uh, power strip here. We'll go ahead and fire up the motor and see if it's going to work. So it looks like the brushes were the problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and see if I can take a screwdriver and gently move that other brush holder back a little bit because it's obvious that one the brushes on the one side is extending further down than the brush holder on the other side. So I'll see if I can gently jiggle that. Uh, but that was the problem. The brushes were the problem, but I wanted to show you uh, a proper way to troubleshoot both the armature and the field windings. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.